Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Amy. Hi. <laughs> this is your weekly roundup for scary shit to watch on YouTube. Now mind you, I am but one person, so please do sound off below on what your favorite videos were this week. I I watched a bunch and you know, I didn't like them all, but the ones that I did like, we're gonna chit chat about today. If it's something that we've already discussed, don't be surprised if I don't bring it up this round. That doesn't mean my love for it has changed. It just means that uh, we've already talked about Mr. Ballin. All right, <laughs> so let's start off, dude. Let's start off with Watcher. Now this week's, what is it? Are you scared of water slides? That was a good freaking story. That was a good story. There were like actual parts that just, ooh, that was good. <laughs> so make sure that you do not miss out on that one. Possibly my favorite story this season for this. At the top of my list, which simply means I saved it first, we have Southern Cannibal and Four True Scary Late Night Stranger Encounter Stories. True scary stories. As we park, I get out to put my mask on. And I notice out of the corner of my eye, two guys in a bluish silver Honda, staring in my direction. One of them was pointing at me through his windshield, which was intended, so I could easily see into his car. His car is parked at the pump directly behind my car, and I'm parked right in front of the gas station's door. I didn't get really nervous right away, because I grew up in this town, and I used to hang out with a really bad crowd as a teen. So in return, I know some sketchy people, unfortunately so I thought maybe they just recognized me. That is, until they got out of the car. That's like one of those videos chock full of stories where you're like, see, this is why I don't fucking like people. <laughs> Next, we have Dr. Hollowed. Creepypasta, great. But does anyone have any good, true, creepy stories? Ask Reddit Scary. We've all been wondering that shit, well, there you go. Start off by saying my brother is not only a military man, but he's your basic hetero never let them see you cry cliche of a military man. He's not afraid of anything, well, except for the entire country of Japan. Swamp Dweller is after my own heart with four scary Washington horror stories, which is a lot of camping stories if I recall correctly. I've listened to, I, there was I don't think I have any business listening to camping stories anymore. I'm just gonna throw that out there because I just, that's one of the easiest ways to frustrate me. <laughs> the year was 2006, sometime in mid-August. We had been renting this double wide trailer on six acres of land for about three years now. The first year, nothing strange really happened at all, unless you asked my mother. We've always been low income, so we were constantly moving, year after year ever since I was knee-high. So, we thought we hit the jackpot when it came time to finding this new and very affordable place. And then I was gonna recommend a Paranormal M video, but that rat bastard says Bloody Mary three times. And normally, whatever, right? But this, for listen, my mind just started playing tricks on me in the middle of the night with that shit, so I'm not gonna recommend that. But, there is the ch channel Paranormal M, that was my first time ever hearing about it. I don't know why YouTube, fuck off, but uh, <laughs> just in case, that channel exists. Check it out. Fuck that video though. <laughs> then we have Chelsea Elizabeth with My Paranormal Experiences. Uh, there's one tale in particular from when uh, she was living in Turkey. And that's when I learned that having curtains in America is completely different from the effort you put forth in hanging curtains in Turkey. You have my respect, turkey fan. So it was the middle of the night and I was sleeping in my bedroom and I had to go to the bathroom. So you know how it is when you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you just kind of like shuffle there, like, you know, trying not to wake yourself up too much. I walked down the hallway and took a left to the bathroom. And as I walked into the bathroom, something kind of stopped me. My body, even though I was kind of on autopilot, like, uh, um, like my subconscious body stopped me because it kind of recognized that something was amiss. Something wasn't as it should be. 
All right, next we have Hell Freezer, Five True Paranormal Stories, episode 252. I have to play some catch up now. This happened to me when I was around six years old in the mid 90s. My father was a Finnish carpenter at the time, and I went to work with him one day. He was working on restoring an old hotel called the Feather River Inn in Plymouth County, California. The inn was built in 1915 and was also a preparatory school. It has now been vacant for a long time. At the time, I knew the inn had a history of being haunted, or at least very spooky. My dad had told me about the place and about stories he had heard. He later had his own story. Now we have the crafty cryptid, who does, uh, like, feel like, you know, in a coloring book while telling the tales, and, uh, love the way they read. So, true paranormal stories from Reddit. You know that's my jam. Scary Ask Reddit Storytime Spooky Week Crafting. When I was a child, I was scared of the dark. I swore to my mother I heard voices in it. They were not evil, but they were not familiar, and so they scared me. It was not uncommon in the middle of the night for me to wake up and hear whispers, as I would call them, when asking my mom. She figured they were just bumps in the night and typical kids' nightmare material. I tried often to explain to her that it was more than that, that they sounded different from one another, the way people's voices do. You know, I think that I don't have to actually put forth the effort of coloring in a coloring book. I'm just as content watching you do it. Thank you. Next is Kinetic Symphony with brief flashes of nothingness, glitch in the matrix stories. Okay, maybe it's not scary, but that shit will fuck you up, okay? Okay, this is weird. There's a lot of tomato bushes in our little garden area, and they're taking over. So my mom killed some of it and took all the tomatoes off of them, made pickles with green ones, and we ate the rest. The bushes were thrown to the other side where it's an empty lot, except for stuff growing. I was strictly against it, because they're still giving tomatoes even though it's getting cold, but it's mom's garden, so I let it go. So far so good. It happened a week or so ago. This morning, while I was asleep, Mom yelled my name, asking me why the hell I replanted the tomatoes. I didn't, but when I went outside, the bushes were back with tomatoes all ripe on them. They weren't there yesterday. I pointed out that even if I replanted them, they literally cannot grow tomatoes and ripen them overnight. And the bushes were all brown due to not being planted for a week or so. But these ones, they're not brown. They're green and huge. So, she tells me to clean them up went to work and I clean up the bushes again and take all the tomatoes on them. I went inside and pickles were there, but now we have more tomatoes than ever and they came out of nowhere. I ate like 10 of them while collecting them. My mother saw the bushes. I saw the bushes. Hell, I derooted, or whatever the word is, all the bushes again. I don't know if it was a glitch or something else. And now, after two hours, I went to the refrigerator to eat the tomatoes I collected at 7am, and they're gone. The bushes are thrown where they were a week before, and all brown and dead. Just, just saying. <laughs> Glitch in the Matrix shit. It's, there's, it's like, if there's five tails, one of those is gonna stay with you for life. <laughs> I'm just saying. Next is Mr. Grimed. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that with paranormal skeptics share their I don't believe in ghosts, but that was really weird story and dude. There's some good shit in there. We had no kids together. I had family a few hours away I could stay with. It just made sense for me to leave. So about two years into his evangelical theology program, I informed him that I wanted to separate. He took it surprisingly well. I thought this would be a smooth, amicable divorce. Then the seizures started. I'd had them on and off since around when I got married. My GP, half a dozen nurses and a neurologist were all baffled as to where they came from. Eventually, it was chalked up to stress, probably, and I was prescribed anticonvulsants and sedatives. But Michael hadn't let me leave the house to pick up my medication. He had long since stopped taking his own. Christ heals all ills, and to trust the invention of man over the creator himself is sinful. 
In fact, Michael hadn't let me leave the house at all in weeks. He left the house claiming to seek a doctor for a home visit and came back with an exorcist. There is also... Notes, my notes, oh god no. Beyond Beza, that's Brenda over there with Shadow Man kept getting closer, reading my subscribers' scary stories. That was some good shit too, and she has like the ambiance going on. And she's in Seattle. Hi neighbor, how's it going? This happened when I was seven or eight years old. It was the middle of the night and I was in my bedroom that I shared with my sister. My bed faced towards the bedroom door and I had a view of the hallway. For some reason, I could not sleep. I just kept looking at the bedroom door. All of a sudden, the bedroom door slammed shut, and a gray mist appeared in my room and moved under my sister's bed. I was so scared, but I couldn't scream. All I could do was whisper my sister's name. It took a long time for me to calm down after that. To this day, I refuse to sleep with my bedroom door open. I have more stories that I will send later. Girl, probably the same reason I don't sleep with the door open because I could never, every single time that I look out the door and it's just dark out there, I'm like, I gotta get up and I gotta close it. Cause sometimes like my mom will come in here or my sister will leave and they'll leave the door open and I'll be too lazy to get up. But as soon as I start seeing the darkness out there, I'm like, mm -mm, gotta get up and close it gotta get my lazy ass up and close it so i feel you on that one i do recommend those videos i watched other shit like i said i watched a bunch of uh camping horror stories one was to, oh my goodness i was so fucking frustrated it was one of those like these couples were out it was like they were all camping and stuff and there was this one couple a husband and a wife and next thing you know, where'd wife go? Oh, she wasn't feeling good. She went home, insisted that I stayed here. Like, your wife is sick. And you were like, cool, go home, take the car. Don't forget to get off your ass and come pick me up, eh? Fuck that. Nah, she's dead. Yeah, she was dead. Spoiler, she was dead. Fuck. You know, I just, I get frustrated and I just want to start some ass. Okay, anyway. If you've made it this far and you're wondering when the heck I'm gonna upload another book review, I need to finish them first, okay? Just give me a minute, I'll do it, it's fine. <laughs> Technically, I did just finish one, um, and it's by one of my favorite YouTubers, but I made a promise, I made a deal with myself when I began this channel that I would not review YouTubers' books. Totally gave that shit five stars. Because the first one that I read was pure shit it was so bad it was bad it was like really really bad and i'm not here to like ruin people's dreams and shit like that so okay. until next time and beyond fam please take care try to now try this one